there. <laughs> we'll get rid of that. All right, we're ready to roll, so whenever you're ready. Oh, I need to put my headset on. All right. I'm always getting this mixed up, too. <sighs> and you're good. Welcome to This Life Matters, and this is Gigi. And this is Drew. How are you this week? I am doing great, and, uh, you know, fall is upon us, and we're thinking about the future, and we have a guest in our studio today. Yes. And it is, uh, now this is going to be third time guest. Yeah, he was here last week, and we just made him sleep underneath the, yeah. the, the studio Yeah, and then here. I had a remote about a year or so ago. Yeah. And so this is third time is the charm, and welcome Joe Dorman. Thank you very much. It's good to be back. And we've introduced him in the past, but, um, you know, he's a mover and a shaker in the Democratic Party in Oklahoma. Do you like that? I try to be. Do you like that, oh, the way I said that? I do. <laughs> okay. It makes me sound important. It does make you sound important. So I do think you're important, and I, he drove up here to be on our show from, uh, well, he was in Oklahoma City. He goes all over the state, but he's from Rush Springs. Do you, uh, Drew, yep. have you ever been to Rush Springs? You know I haven't. Uh, oh. you know, I, it sounds he like... He didn't bring a watermelon. Rush Springs is famous for their watermelon. Yeah. And it's out of season, so... They went out of season late this year. They went out of season mid-September. Okay. Uh, which is about a month later than normal, but yeah. because of the flooding and the hail this year, the crops had to keep being replanted so we got them for a little bit longer but yeah we just missed it with the airing of the show sorry about that well that's okay next year next year how about next that? year okay. i like that yeah a live remote in rush springs both of you are invited i will be the chairman of the watermelon festival yet hey, again we should do that <laughs> you know it, second will it, saturday of august will it be 105 degrees or anything it is always on <laughs> one of the three hottest days of the year and i have no control over that i wish i did is there one of those misting fans that is something we actually talked about trying to put in place. We have it in our local park, and those uh, misting fans are wonderful, and I would like to do that next year just to help out. Can we? Uh, how about electronics? Can, you think we could probably be where we could be cooled by the misting fan if we had a mic? I bet we can find a way to make it work. We might could. We could yeah. plasticize everything or something. Yeah. You know, <laughs> before we get into the show, i got a question for you. What exactly do you... Uh, what exactly... Do you do now that you're, you know, like you've been a, a politician for how long? 20 plus years. Yeah. Have you had another job? Because, you know, most politicians I meet, they were former lawyers or judges or something like that. Georgine was telling me that you, you primarily it's, it's been politics. It has been. I decided early on I wanted to dedicate all my time to public service. And George and I summed it up. A lot of people say politician's a bad word. Uh, we're just one notch above used car salesmen. Yeah. And sometimes you get a good used car salesman, and that bumps politicians down to the bottom. But he said, do you want someone who's a professional representing you and doing your work if you're going to have some kind of medical procedure or you have to go to court? Answer is absolutely. You want someone who understands it. So he always wanted to be a professional at political service and being a public servant, and I followed in those footsteps. I decided that I would not hold a job down while I was in the legislature, and it allowed me to dedicate all my time. The salary is one of the better in the United States. We make 38400 as legislators, but it's still not that great. But, but it is, and people think, oh, it's only four months. But you, you're working it all year long. Absolutely. You would make trips to meet with constituents, mm -hmm. chamber meetings, I had three career techs and three colleges around my area. So you're constantly in meetings if you do it the right way. So I dedicated 100% of my time into that position. And I'm glad I did because it did allow me the opportunity to run for governor. And it was an amazing experience in 2014. I learned so much about the state. And it's allowed me to stay active and, as you said, be a mover and a shaker. Yeah, mover and I'm and remaining shaker. that way. I like to uh -huh. be out there. I try and be a voice for people who still need that. I'm mm -hmm. Now I'm working three different jobs. I'm doing two consulting gigs, and I work for Heart Mobile, which is a lifeline company that's a nationwide company. I'm their community outreach director, and we work to get citizens who qualify for some type of government assistance the opportunity to qualify for our mobile phones. And we have a store in Tulsa. We have a couple of stores in Oklahoma City, one in Shawnee. And so working with that, and we're trying to clean up the image of that industry 
by working to get the program to people who truly need the assistance. And you're going to see a lot of college students who will mm -hmm. qualify for that. And don't so. have 13 of them. Yeah. That's exactly right. The The FCC has put in new restrictions and new guidelines. Internet service is soon going to qualify, and there are very tight constraints on it. But oh, it's heartmobile.com. People can check it out. I think that Internet thing is a great idea because so many people don't have the capability of that. And far too many. In one school district, and I've encouraged Oklahoma school districts to look <coughs> at this, one school district has put wireless um, hubs on their school buses and they mm -hmm. park their school buses all throughout the community at night so that's people cool. will have access to free that internet. Is, yeah, that's brilliant. I like that and idea. I'm yeah. hoping Tulsa Public Schools will do that, Oklahoma City Public Schools and some of the larger districts because that would provide free internet service for the kids yeah. and as we know kids are having to do the research they have to have that technology mm -hmm. and that's one of the great things about our program with the phones we provide that affordable opportunity to have that you cannot make it in society without some type of communication you cannot no. move yourself to a better mm -hmm. place in your life without the ability to call the doctor call your employer you've just got to have that in life now so on your phones uh they will have the capability to have internet. Many of them do, and that yeah, that okay. comes with the program. Start the okay. the most affordable program still comes with a data plan. That's really cool because uh, you can't get any information, Drew, these days unless you have no. the internet. Everything's no. on you have to. online. A hundred percent, you have to. And if you want to know anything, you just Google it and you write the question in, and <laughs> and there's the answer. Well, the last show when we talked about the online voter registration, right. I looked up the guidelines of what was in yeah. the legislation that passed. Yeah. And you've just got to have that information yeah, you at your fingertips nowadays yeah. to be able to function. Well, one of the things that we're going to talk about today, the point of this show, is that we're going to talk about legislative issues. And along with that voter registration, then, okay, so somebody becomes registered to vote, and then what, why, you know, we've got the legislative session coming up, and as the government relations chair for the Oklahoma Counseling Association, I've been very involved with that for many, many years. So 